Framework Tutorial Video 2 in our Orc Framework Tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be setting up, finishing setting up the project and putting together our main menu as well as our scene loader into the town scene. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to install or, you know, yeah, you want to install your Orc Tutorial resources. So you're going to go to the website and download the Gabe Tutorial resources. Look for this pack. Once you unpack it, you're going to find this package. Just go ahead and double click that from the uh, import packages and then you'll see all this stuff. And just just in case I like to select all, it's not absolutely necessary. If you just scroll through and see it's all selected, it's fine. I just do it for the sake of doing it. I've already done it so I'm not going to select it. Import, but go ahead and select import and you'll get all this stuff right here. You get the standard assets and these tutorial assets or these tutorial resources. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to our build settings. In the build settings, we need to add all of our scenes or nothing will actually work when we set it up. So what you could do is you could just add open scenes like that, but it only adds the one, right? So we don't want to do that because that would take a lot longer than simply selecting the first one, holding down the shift key, and selecting the last one. That selects all of them. Just click and drag. Drop them in. Perfect. We're all done here. Let's go ahead and close that. We're ready to go. Okay, so before we get started, you, I, I, as you can see, I have the scene wizard and the orc framework docked in my main area here, my main work area. Um, to get both of these tabs, normally I would use this side, but they don't actually show up here. So just go to window, and you can find them both here. So it's scene wizard and framework. There's their uh, keyboard shortcuts. Okay, you don't have to dock them. I just do it because it's my way of doing things. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm still in that scene. Okay, perfect. Let's add a game starter. What this does is it starts the game for us. It sets everything up with uh, with your framework. So we're going to add game starter there. We're going to make sure that over here on the right in the inspector, while we have the orc game starter selected, let's call main menu. That's all we have to do there. Okay, let's select our orc framework now. And we're going to go to the, main, uh, the menu settings, which you'll find if you look here all the way across the top. On the far right, you'll see menus. Inside menus, we're going to select menu settings and make sure that under the base settings, GUI system settings, it's legacy GUI. In a later video, we will be covering the new UI, but for this one, we're going to stick to this, the legacy GUI. Okay, go ahead and scroll down, and it's going to be a bit of a scroll. And here we are. Okay, default GUI box settings. Go ahead and go to your tutorial resources, select skins. You'll see we have two GUI skins here. The names correspond with their fields. Base skin into base skin, selected choice into selected choice. Once you have that complete, you can either click and drag to make that happen, or you can select a little circle here, navigation window to find the assets. Once you have that complete, you're going to scroll down here to default audio settings. The same thing is going to happen, just in those si inside tutorial resources, go to audio, and you'll see here's your audio file. Just click and drag each one over, or select a little circle here to open up the navigation window put each one in. I like to, first of all, just drag it over. The window can cover things. I've got to move everything around. It's like more time to do something pretty simple. So each of these is going to correspond with the exception of ability level change. Here you're going to add cursor 1 to ability level change, and then user change will be accept 01. All right, that finishes up this area. So let's go down to um, GUI boxes. Now here you see yours will say default. So let's go ahead and change that, make sure it says main menu. So from now on, anytime we ever need to call this again, we'll have this GUI box ready to go. We're basically setting up a prefab. So rename that main menu, ensure that height adjustment says auto, or auto is enabled, and then make sure the rest of this is disabled. We're going to scroll down to content box settings. In this field, we're going to make sure that these say 640 by 400 by 200 by 200, and that your anchor is middle center. Basically that's going to put it right in the middle or the anchor point in the GUI box will be right in the center so that it centers it kind of on uh, our screen in the center and this will be the field of the box. Okay that's pretty much it for that. We don't have anything else to do here so let's go up to main menu. All right um, and under base settings you'll see main menu scene and idle call. In main menu scene in the text field there go ahead and write zero main menu. Underneath that, select Auto Call. Once you're done, scroll down to New Game Settings and type in One Town. 
stop music you can click that because we may want to put some music in the main menu you don't want that music to carry over into the town scene maybe you do but we're going to go ahead and enable that and uh, that makes it we're pretty much done there we'll scroll down make sure GUI the menu option says GUI box main menu all right and now we're going to go down to our these are our button fields so you'll see new game button we don't need to do the continue button for now but for new game button Go ahead and type in the field whatever you want. It comes with it already saying new game, so that's fine. If you want to name it something else, you go you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. Uh, scroll down to load button, we, and leave all these disabled. We don't need any of these. Uh, load button, show load. So make sure that show load is enabled so that the load button does show up. Now we don't have anything to load, and we won't because this is a lot of our testing will be inside the player. We'll actually be doing a build for every test. So name that button whatever you want right here in the name field, name text field, and then uh, auto select is leave that enabled, disable all this other stuff. Don't worry about any of these. Scroll down to see exit button. Uh, make sure show exit is enabled, and then name it whatever you want. Now by default this is named exit. I chose name exit game because I didn't like the fact that they weren't all the same kind of naming convention. So that's what I did there. Exit question, select main menu. For the GUI box there and we are good to go. Go ahead and save your settings. I don't have anything saved because nothing changed for me. So once your settings are saved, open up the scene. Oh, just I don't like when it's uh, not lined up. So we're just going to put that to where it's a little bit closer because I like things to be like that. Go ahead and hit play. Alright, here's our menu. We've completed it. We're done. Well, almost done. So we have our main menu and our sounds are all there. If you click exit, nothing happens because it says in a full build. So let's go ahead and hit control P. That'll basically stop the play. Now go ahead and control P again. Now the menu loads up again. Go ahead and hit new game. Should load the town scene. Perfect. Everything's working perfectly so far. Control P to shut that down. All right, we're good to go. So in the next video, we will be going over adding the player and setting up some things in the town so we can start preparing for the really big stuff and laying some, uh, some, some good groundwork. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.